Good evening. I'm Mark Bach, our Director of Finance and Administration. So, uh, lucky you, you get the accountant now. Uh, I'll try to keep this short. I'll not keep you up any longer than, than I have to. But you know, normally if you've come to these meetings before, you've, you've heard me tell a couple jokes. I like to take shots at accountants, and I'll take a few shots at engineers. But I'll try to keep it just strictly to my day job today, so I'll spare you my stand-up routine. Uh, all right, one. One joke. Uh, does anybody know why scuba divers always fall backwards out of the boat? Because if they fell forwards, they'd still be in the boat. <laughs> All right, that's enough. I'll, I'll, keep, I'll stick to accounting. Uh, I don't have any videos, but I do have a couple of cool charts and graphs for you. Uh, first thing I want to touch on is our, our annual audit. Uh, we, we did get a, a clean opinion on our audit for this year. And, and what that means is, is the most important thing that it means is the financial reports that go to our board and management can be relied upon. Uh, it is reliable information. Uh, part of what they do then too is they also check to make sure we're in compliance with our, our loan covenants. A uh, major lender for us is the, the RUS, the Rural Utility Service. Uh, if you've been around a while, you remember, might remember that as the REA. Uh, that's the RUS now. Uh, in addition to the audit, I want to touch on a few, few key metrics financially. Uh, our operating revenues increased only slightly in 2017. Uh, roughly $90 million is what we take in annually in revenue. Uh, from this pie chart, that, that blue portion, uh, that's, what, that's the residential and seasonal portion of our revenue. Uh, as you can tell from that, we're very heavily a residential system. Uh, not a whole lot of, of commercial or industrial load on our system. Uh, it's the rural areas around northeastern Minnesota. Homes and farms is most of what we have. Now, our local expenses increased less than 1% in 2017. So part of our commitment and part of our mission is to make sure we're, we're managing your resources wisely. Uh, that's, that was very good on our part to, to manage expenses to less than a 1% increase. Uh, the cost of wholesale power uh, from Great River Energy uh, has also been pretty flat the last couple of years, uh, flat going into 2018 as well. Uh, so containing costs on, on all fronts uh, has, has helped us to, to keep things fairly stable. Uh, I mentioned GRE, uh, wholesale power costs is, is more than 50% of our total budget. Uh, you're looking out here, it's 53% for 2017. Uh, that equates to about $48 million is what we, what we paid for the power that we provide to you. Uh, we're the distribution end of the business. We own the substations and poles and wires getting it to your house. Great River Energy, we're part owner of that. There's 28 co-ops that own that. They're the, the generation, the transmission, end, the power plants and the big transmission lines. We pick it up at the substation. Uh, depreciation and interest are also large components of our, of our expenses. Those are direct ownership costs of the distribution system. The poles and the wires, transformers, trucks, uh, those, are, those are significant and they're steady. They're, they're always gonna be there. That's just the cost of owning and maintaining that system. This line chart helps to, helps to tell the story of, of Lake Country Power. What it is, Lake Country Power is that blue line at the top. Uh, what, what this shows, and then the green and the red lines are, are peer groups. Uh, comparing us to national is the green line and then state is the red line. Uh, this is the total number of miles of line. Uh, Lake Country Power has over 8,300 miles of line that we own and maintain. Uh, for reference purposes, that's nearly three times more than, than what we would consider a typical co-op across Minnesota or across the country. So then the flip side of that story though, we have, a, we have a lot of miles of line, but we have a lot of low usage customers. Uh, what you're looking at here, we're the blue line again, but this time we're on the bottom. Uh, what it is is kilowatt hours sold per mile of line. Uh, we, have, we have a big system, and it doesn't have a lot of load hanging on it. So it creates some challenges from a, from a maintenance perspective. You know, I was thinking about that. I mean, I was, maybe it's just part of where I grew up or where we all live, but I, I was always getting yelled at growing up to turn the lights off. So apparently that, that works. Our members are doing that. Our service territory is larger than, than most co-ops in the country. Uh, that has a direct bearing on our operation and maintenance expenses. That's what this is. Again, we're the blue line and those other ones are, are state and national peer group comparisons. Uh, this is just O&M expenses, mostly our local costs. The largest component of this outside of employee labor is, is right-of-way spending. And what I mean by that is, is tree clearing. For our 8,300 miles of line, roughly three quarters of that is overhead line uh, where we have tree issues. Uh, we've aggressively managed that and we continue to do that. We try to get through our entire system every seven years. Uh, that seems to be the sweet spot where anything longer than that and then the tree growth gets, gets unmanageable and it starts having 
having reliability issues and outage, outage situations. Uh, for comparison, I was talking maintenance a little bit. Uh, most of you probably own a, a home or a car. Uh, it's, it's, it's similar to that. There's costs that, that go into owning, operating, and maintaining those things. That, it's the same for us. Uh, we have the same things. We've got insurance, we've got oil changes for our vehicles, tires, buildings, all of those things. We've got it just on a larger scale, but similar to what you've got for your assets at home. We'll talk member equity a little bit. And what, what member equity is, it's your ownership share in, in the co-op, so in Lake Country Power. Uh, we're roughly 36% equity. Uh, to, to oversimplify it a little bit, we have, we have two sources of funding. We can get it from our members or we can get it from lenders or banks. Uh, wouldn't, it's, it's not smart to, to get it all from today's members. Uh, it wouldn't be right to, if they were building a substation, it wouldn't be right to collect all that money from the members today when members 20, 30, 40 years from now are going to be benefiting from that. Uh, it's also not smart to collect it all from the banks in 100% debt finance and everything. So, for us, our target is between 35 and 40 percent equity. That seems to be about the right place, to, and that's where we're at. Uh, that just helps to offset the amount of money we have to borrow from banks to be able to do our, our system improvements and maintenance. Uh, last year, we paid back over $4 million in, in capital credits, and capital credits are the, the member piece of, of the equity. We call it capital credits in a co-op. Uh, the average retirement uh, was in December was about $40. Uh, you would have seen that as a credit on your December bill. Uh, we are a, a not-for-profit co-op, but that doesn't mean that we, that we operate at zero margin. We are required to, to maintain a margin. Uh, that ensures that we can, we can operate and safely operate a, a distribution system on your behalf. Uh, our margin for 2017 was about $3.4 million. Uh, that may sound like a lot, but on, on $90 million in revenue, that $3.4 million isn't really that much of a margin. Uh, in a, in a for-profit business world, when I'm saying margin, what that really equates to is net income. Uh, that would be a more, more common term for that. Uh, we remain what I would consider cautiously optimistic uh, for 2018. Uh, we're projecting revenues of roughly $91.6 million, uh, and that's on about 650 million kilowatt hours that will that we'll probably sell in 2018. Uh, if you came to our district meetings, uh, you probably heard me talk rates. Uh, the, the rate outlook, I mean, the rate news is good news. We're not planning any sort of a rate increase this year. Uh, the weather outside has been horrible for human beings, but I'll tell you, it's good for sales. Uh, so it's good for your co-op that it's been this cold, but I think people are plenty sick of it. Uh, there is a chance uh, Mother Nature could dictate otherwise in the form of outages where we may need to do something with rates, but that, that isn't the plan. Uh, we do budget on an annual basis for what we consider a, a normal year, so we, we do budget some storm costs and some outage restoration costs, but if we have something major roll through like we had in 2016, uh, the, uh, that may change the story a little bit, but right now we're not planning on that. Our rate structure, Greg touched on it a little bit, uh, it ensures that, I mean, it, what it does is it helps insulate us from, from weather fluctuations. We do have a lot of electric heating on our system. Long cold winters like 2013, 2014, and now 2018, uh, they drive our sales up. Uh, if we were collecting, say, say we collect all of our revenue in a, in a kilowatt hour charge, this year we would have collected too much because our sales were up because of the weather. Uh, we have a long view on rates and our, our rate structure. We have a, you know, a fixed component of that called a service availability charge. It's $42 a month. That, that is the cost of having that service in place, whether you use one kilowatt hour or 10 million. Uh, that enables us, when I mentioned about weather, it insulates us from that, but it also enables us to create stability, uh, stability in our rates. So we're not you know, continuously adjusting rates up or down based on, based on sales volume. Uh, it helps us also ensure that we can, that we can maintain a, a safe and reliable distribution system. Uh, we really need to, we need to do that, and we've made a commitment to do that. Uh, if you are interested, I had a, I'd, as much as I'd like to think you are, but you may not be. There's a, there's, our financial statements are printed in, in our annual report, and I believe there was a copy of that in your registration bag. Uh, last thing I want to touch on is, is Smart Hub. Uh, Smart Hub a, is a mobile application we have. You can get to it from the internet on a computer or on a, a tablet or a smartphone. Uh, what you can do in there, you can, obviously you can pay your bill, you can check your usage, compare, compare months. Uh, you can also report outages in there. Uh, you can sign up for notifications in there, and what I mean by that, let's say if you're a dual fuel member, 
you can sign up for notifications where we will let you know either you know text message or email that we're going to control dual fuel heat so you'll, we'll give you a heads up you can go in there and sign up for that what I really want to touch on though is some of the tools you, that we have for looking at your energy usage uh, what this one is I just I mean this this is an actual member of ours what I did is these are average average kilowatt hour usage this is a three-year period 2015 through 2017 and I grabbed this member because this member has two meters this is a dual fuel customer uh, that green the green smaller amount that's just general service uh, that's what they're using for lights and appliances and those things uh, that the orange stuff that's the heat meter so you can see you can see on here and that black line that's the average temperature uh, so clearly it's warmer in the summer colder in the winter but you can see when the, when the heating heating season kicks on what happens to energy usage at this place uh, another way to look at that this is this is a one-year look uh, this is 2017 by month uh, same thing the two meters are, are displayed separately the purple is is the dual fuel meter and the, and the green there's general service you can drill down even farther in this this is one month look every day of the month uh, i picked october here because then it's easy to see then when the heat turned on towards the end of the month in october and then stays on right now still through april but uh, same thing there that black line is the, the average daily temperature for for where this place is located so there's some pretty cool stuff you can do in there uh, if you're tech savvy go check it out uh, would also i mean to encourage you to sign up for for auto payment i uh, will the the one that's most efficient for us and most cost effective is if you sign up for, for bank drafting uh, where we will on the due date take it from your bank account that's the cheapest way for us to process payments uh, and I, I understand that some people might not be comfortable with that and that's cool you can still mail us checks we'll, we have people that process the mail uh, the booth in the back I think Barb's got some smart hub information if you're more interested in that Barb raise your hand that's Barb back there she's our billing manager she'd be the smart hub expert uh, I'm done. So now it's my pleasure to introduce Rick Lancaster, the Vice President of Generation from Great River Energy. And Rick's also a Lake Country Power member, so come on up, Rick. <laughs>